the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over his church, God's Spirit is moving. All over his as the prophet said it would be, all over his church, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Right here in this place, the Spirit is moving. Right here in this place, as the prophet said it would be. Right here in this place, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Good morning and welcome to worship at Church Online Kilmarnock on this Sunday the 7th of May 2023, this coronation weekend. In our service today, we'll be celebrating Jesus, the King of Kings. And I'll be talking about the Stone of Schoon, or the Stone of Destiny, and how many years ago, I believe that I saw the real one in a church in Dundee. join me in prayer. O oh God our Father, for this new morning and its light, for the rest and the shelter of the night, for health and food and love and friends, for every gift your goodness sends. We thank you, 
loving God. And hear us now as we pray together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, your world is full of beautiful gifts. Sometimes we just do not see them. And so Lord, forgive us and help us to see with your eyes. Sometimes we take our gifts for granted. We see them as our own property. And sometimes we boast about them when we should be using them in the service of others. Lord, forgive us and help us to live in your love. Lord, sometimes we know you're calling us to use a gift, but we hold back and someone suffers as a result. Lord, forgive us and help us to be brave in your love. Lord, sometimes we use our gift when we should be giving someone else the chance to use theirs. Lord, forgive us and help us not to be too proud to step back and share. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Genesis. We read from chapter 28, beginning at verse 10. Listen for the word of God. Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and started towards Haran. At sunset, he came to a holy place and camped there. He lay down to sleep, 
resting his head on a stone. He dreamt that he saw a stairway reaching from earth to heaven, with angels going up and coming down on it, and there was the Lord standing beside him. I am the Lord, the God of Abraham and Isaac, he said. I will give to you and to your descendants this land on which you are lying. They will be as numerous as the specks of dust on the earth. They will extend their territory in all directions. And through you and your descendants, I will bless all nations. Remember, I will be with you and protect you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done all that I have promised you. Jacob woke up and said, The Lord is here. He is in this place. And I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, What a terrifying place this is. It must be the house of God. It must be the gate that opens into heaven. Jacob got up early next morning, took the stone that was under his head and set it up as a memorial. Then he poured olive oil on it to dedicate it to God. He named the place Bethel. The town there was once known as Luz. Then Jacob made a vow to the Lord. If you will be with me and protect me on the journey I am making and give me food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then you will be my God. This memorial stone which I have set up will be the place where you are worshipped and I will give you a tenth of everything you give me. Amen. Turn now to John's Gospel, John chapter 14, and reading from verse 1. Listen for the word of God. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. And I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. 
No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, For a long time I have been with you all, yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Whoever believes in me will do what I do. Yes, he will do even greater things because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask for in my name, so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. And now our prayers of thanksgiving and for others. Let's pray. Sovereign Lord, today we ask your blessing upon Charles, our King. Anoint him with the gifts of your Holy Spirit as he seeks to fulfil his calling amongst us. Strengthen him with wisdom and justice to serve the people of this land and to honour and glorify your name. We ask you to bless all the generations of the royal family and strengthen them as they begin this new chapter of service. Grant them joy and peace as they celebrate together this moment in history and inspire them in their work. Sovereign Lord, as we celebrate King Charles here on earth, we turn with gratitude and thanksgiving to you, our gracious God. We are who we are today because of who you are, our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, our wonderful Counsellor, our Heavenly Father. Thank you. Living God, thank you for bringing us together in our households, our families, our church family and our communities, and for teaching us to love one another as Christ has loved us. In these days of celebration, support us in the service of our neighbours and in pursuit of the common good of our nation. May your will be done in us and through us. We thank you for deep relationships, for opportunities to give and to receive, to listen and to hear what others are saying. We thank you for the privilege of serving one another. We bring you now our thoughts and prayers for those people, places and situations that trouble us. We pray for all who are sick, Lord, so many come to mind, so many sick with illnesses of both body and mind. Compassionate God, would you bring healing and comfort and would you grant rest to all who care for loved ones through their illness. We pray for all who grieve today, so many come to mind, those recently bereaved and those for whom time has passed but the pain of loss remains. Loving Lord, would you comfort them and grant them your peace. 
We thank you for the comforting promise that you prepare a place for our loved ones and that they are now at peace with you. We pray today for all who are struggling, for all who live in fear and for those who just feel lost. Lord, let them know they are safe in your care and that others care. Surround them with a community that will love them back to full strength. Especially we pray for people in the most challenging places and circumstances where war and violence rage, those places where famine and disease now ravage in the aftermath. Sovereign Lord, open our eyes and our hearts that we might make a small difference from our corner of the world to those who suffer. In their suffering, Lord, may they know your love. May they know our love. We pray for ourselves, Lord, with our own worries and concerns, with our hopes and our dreams. Help us, we pray, to live lives filled with meaning, love and care. And show us today and all days how to use all your gifts for the glory of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we bring these our prayers in the precious name of Jesus, with thankful hearts for the privilege of being able to come to you in prayer. Amen. And our poem, courtesy of Engage Worship. We've heard that a new king is coming. Announce it with fanfares and tweets. Tell every nation with anticipation to stay on the edge of their seats. We've heard that a new king is coming, more famous than William and Charles. His power is greater than Meghan on Insta, his might more than Swedish King Carol's. But this king is not found in a palace. This king is not found on our thrones. Our king can be found in an animal stall, in the everyday mess of our homes. The prophets announced his arrival, predicting a new boss in town. This guy's got more thump than old President Trump, more pull than Beyonce's next gown. The angels declare that he's landing and turning the world upside down. The poor and the lonely are his kingdom homies, while mighty ones sulk, grump and frown. Cause this king is not found in a palace. This king is not found on TV. Our king can be found with the weak and the small and washing feet down on his knees. Our king, he was born a minority, a refugee paying the cost, bullied and beaten. He started his kingdom by dying a king on a cross. But broadcast it, this king is living. Yes, he came and he's coming again. Tell all of creation with great expectation. He'll make it all right in the end. Cos our king is not found in a palace. He's not even confined to our church. Our king knows no limits. He's free by the spirit and coming to make new his earth.
Here's our message this morning. The bells were ringing yesterday. The country was celebrating the coronation weekend. Now, whether you approve of the monarchy or not, you certainly can't have missed what's going on right round the country this weekend. It has been parade and pageant and party. And in church today, we'll continue that theme with our coronation lunch in the hall. Of course, Scotland's Stone of Schoon, or Stone of Destiny, played a major part in it all, as King Charles sat on the 700-year-old coronation chair with the Stone of Schoon in its base. It was taken from Edinburgh Castle with a guard of honour and piper at the beginning of its journey down south. Well, my connection with the Stone of Destiny was that my father went to school with one of the men who repatriated it from Westminster Abbey on Christmas Day 1950. And what a stushy that caused. For the first time in 400 years, the border between Scotland and England was closed as they attempted to hunt down the nationalists who had taken it. Well, despite their best efforts and despite a lucrative reward being offered, nobody would hand it over. And it wasn't until the following year that it was found in the ruins of Arbroath Abbey and taken back down south to Westminster. Or was it? You see, I believe I saw the real stone of destiny in a church in Dundee in the 1980s. I had just moved to the city and was starting out in my first charge when an old minister in a neighbouring congregation invited me to come and see the stone of destiny which he was keeping safe under lock and key in his church. Now, whether it was a copy or whether it was the real thing, I can tell you that the Reverend Jack Nimmo firmly believed that it was genuine. And I didn't think too much about it at the time because I didn't know Jack well and I realised that you get eccentrics in most walks of life. But years later, I read an article on the stone of Schoon. And I learned that when the broken stone was repaired, then that repair was carried out by a Glasgow stone mason by the name of Robert Gray. And Robert Gray and the Reverend Jack Nimmo were old pals. 
So I'll let you make up your own mind on which one is genuine and which one is the copy. But of course, legend has it that the stone of destiny was the stone that was Jacob's pillow when he had his dream at Bethel. A dream where God promised to be with his people and protect them. And so when he woke, Jacob set that stone up as a memorial. He poured olive oil onto it and dedicated it to God. But you know, for me, the most meaningful part of this whole weekend of celebrations was when Charles was welcomed in the name of the King of Kings and then responded in his name and after his example, I come not to be served, but to serve. It's our great privilege today to serve Jesus through serving others. And what we do, we do in his name. The care that we offer, the love that we share, the service that we render, then we do it for him and in his cause. And that puts it all into perspective. For when we grow tired of caring, or weary in our loving, when we grudge the service we offer, or when we feel taken for granted and unappreciated, when we compare what we do with what others do and then complain about it, then we need to stop, take a step back, and remember in whose name we do it and whose cause we serve. For what we do here and elsewhere, we do for Christ and in his name. And when we focus on that fact and appreciate that it's our great privilege to serve him, then it makes us ashamed of our moans and our complaints and our grudging reluctance to help. Our destiny is not tied up with some old lump of sandstone, but is instead secured by the King of Kings, by God in our midst, by Jesus the human face of God. Remember he said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Here's a poem by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette that sums up Jesus, the image of the Father, the human face of God. Christ, you are the Saviour. Christ, you are the Saviour, the way to the Father, the truth we depend on, the life that we need. We trust you, believing. We listen, receiving. The joy of the gospel by which we are freed. Yet, Lord, you remind us. Through mercy you find us. By grace you forgive us. The way home is yours. We dare not judge others, our sisters and brothers, whom you choose to welcome through love's open door. With outcast and sinner, you sat down to dinner. You healed the Samaritans, Gentiles too. The poor knew your caring, the rich your declaring that God welcomes everyone not just a few. A conquering nation brought harsh occupation. A soldier came asking you offer the hand. A thief saw your power in his final hour. 
you welcomed him home to God's heavenly land. O Lord, all around us, your mercies astound us as others discover the way you reveal. A man whispers, help me. A woman cries, mercy. A doubter discovers, your welcome is real. O way to the Father, your mercy is broader than we as your people have often proclaimed. May we welcome others as sisters and brothers and treasure the life that we share in your name. Amen.
majestic name above all others.